welcome to another episode of I Am Nano. Putting the I in I Am Nano, I am your host, Irfani. And I am your other host, Monica. And today, we're going to be talking about nano stars. And no, no, it's not like the famous people on nano, but actual six triangle stars done at the nano scale. Yeah, exactly. But we're all nano stars at heart, so right? <laughs> yeah, I hope so. So this article is titled, Brace Yourself. It's a big one. On Surface Synthesis and collective spin excitations of a triangulene-based nanostar. Okay, hold on. I think I'm going to need a dictionary for every three words in that sentence. <laughs> um, okay, so where is this published in? Sounds really heavy in chemistry this time. Yes, definitely it is. And it is on the Higher Impact Scale of Chemistry Journals. It's Angawante Shimi. International edition. So this journal actually does have a German version. Some work does come out in German, but you have to cite the international English version when you're writing your projects or report papers, because I've seen it so many times where students get asked by their professors, oh, do you speak German? Because you cited Angawante and not the international version, which is pretty funny because people get lost and they're like, what are you talking about? But I've seen it actually that the student answers, yes. I do speak and read German. Thank you very much. But usually <laughs> it's not the case. Okay. So just, you know, avoid that trap and cite the international version pretty much always, right? Yes, exactly. Most of the time. And so just a quick tip there. But usually <laughs> the DOI, so the website link is the same and the article is all in English, but something to be definitely aware of for the older articles. And yeah. Anyways, back to the Nanostar business, mm -hmm. which is an open access article from October 2021. Oh, nice. So basically, since there's no paywall, anyone can go right ahead and read the article and you know, gain the knowledge since it's openly accessible. <laughs> Yes, which is great since not all institutions have subscriptions mm -hmm. to journal articles. Right. So it is really nice that the authors who usually have to pay themselves a fee to get the open access, they do so. It's not always possible for everyone since, you know, funding is very hard to come by, but it's nice. Mm -hmm. when it yeah, but you know, it's good when there's enough money to do that. And it's really appreciated worldwide and just, you know, helps getting the research out there, you know, kind of like us, we help talk about research and then get it out in a way yeah exactly we totally do that yeah. and uh, <laughs> and the work here was done by various groups throughout Spain and it's about this area of open shell molecules which means that not all the electrons are paired so so a closed shell molecule is another way of saying that there are zero unpaired electrons in all occupied orbitals so there are atoms like krypton, the noble gas, and zinc, plus two ions, which are closed shell atoms. But there is another molecule version like that, which is the oxygen with a charge of negative two, and that would be a closed shell molecule. Exactly. And an open shell molecule would be just the divalent oxygen, O2. And another example of an open shell molecule is called a triangulene nanographene, which is basically a group of aromatic rings, so those hexagon shapes made of carbon that are put together and look like a triangle. And usually you'll see a number in front of the triangulene to show how many hexagons are along the edge of the molecule. And in here in this work, they focus on three triangulines. So you have three hexagons on the side of the molecule. Kind of looks like a mini Christmas tree, like three benzene rings and then two right on top and then one on top. Yeah. And so to create the actual nano star, the researchers found a way to put together six of these so-called three triangulines together as you just described, and mm -hmm. the center part is empty, nothing in there. And typically when there's a hole in something like this, we call it a pore. So the pore size of this nanostar is about 1.2 nanometers and it looks very, very pretty. 
Yeah, I saw the images and they look really pretty. So cool. Well, but, you know, aside from looking very cool, why is it so special? Well, a few things I'm glad you asked. For one, the molecule backbone was made in the lab. So it was using solution chemistry where you mix stuff in beakers. So you, they got a structure almost like the nanostar, but missing some aromatic bonds. So they took this precursor, then they placed it on the surface of a gold substrate, heated it up using some ultra high vacuum conditions, and then they got the nanostar that has 12 unpaired electrons total. Wow. Okay, so lots of different science techniques used there. Now, and I guess that is where the on-surface synthesis in the title means, because the final product was made on the gold, on the surface of gold, right? So that's really cool. And now how did the researchers verify the stars were actually made? So a special imaging technique was used, and that's called scanning tunneling microscopy, STM, a mm -hmm. bit more complex than a typical AFM or SEM, SEM that we usually talk about. Right, so we can actually see the compounds on the atom scale. The images are really, really cool. Yes, very, very nice pictures but less than 10% of the molecules on the surface were actually observed to be the nanostars. Mm. But it was enough to see, you know, a few of these nanostars and analyze their spin states. Mm -hmm. And overall, it was observed that the electron coupling, this was done through inelastic scattering spectroscopy, and it was shown that the nanostars have antiferromagnetic behavior. Oh, okay. So just to go back to the basics here. So electrons can either spin up or down. And in an electron pair or electron coupling, one of them spins up and the other spins down. So they analyze the nanostar by looking at the energy changes, which is really, really cool. And the star was antiferric magnetic, which means that the overall magnetic properties of the material that spins the electrons are opposing or anti-parallel to the neighbors. Yes, it's a fairly complex concept for sure, but in the cover art, so in the front page of the paper, mm -hmm. we see these alternating arrows up and down to illustrate the behavior. And it's overall a really cutting edge paper that is available for free, which is awesome, mm -hmm. but very science heavy and very exploration heavy rather than being, oh, I'm doing this to directly for this application right, as we have right. covered with different nanotech works. This is more open to applications. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of things to discover for sure in nanoscience and nanotech. And we may not know how it can be applied in day-to-day -day life just yet, but so far we do have some amazing, beautiful pictures out of it now. <laughs> yeah, and, and you know, interesting observations with the spin states. For yeah, sure. for sure. In the future, we'll know. Yeah. <laughs> all right, that is all that I know for today. Take care. And stay curious. <laughs>